In this week's video, I'm going to speak about how to be successful as an introvert in your coaching business. If you've been following me for a while, you know this is something I am passionate about because it's something I had to learn when I started my business. As an introvert, I felt like there weren't a lot of other examples of people who were more introverted marketing their coaching business. And I definitely felt like, oh my gosh, how am I going to stand out and be seen with these other people who are more extroverted, more putting themselves out there, seem very comfortable with it. And I was afraid I was going to have to do things that didn't feel aligned for me, that felt icky. Um, like I said, just not really knowing, like, how do I stand out? Do I have to pretend to be like these other people that I'm seeing out there and market how they're marketing and look how they're looking? And it felt uncomfortable. It felt scary. And so it's something I want to talk about because I hear this from a lot of my clients. Um, a lot of them are a bit more on the introverted side. They haven't been out there um, on social media, like really sharing a lot. So when you're starting an online business, that can feel very intimidating and very new and just like, oh my gosh, you know, how do I do this? And it can feel draining too. Like if you're someone who's a little bit more introverted, I think that's one of the big things. Um, you aren't necessarily used to really putting yourself out there and um, sharing a lot. And so when you look at having to start to do that for marketing, you can be like, oh my gosh, this feels really draining or I'm afraid it's going to be draining or I'm afraid I'm going to have to do things that are draining. <laughs> and so I want to talk about how I have navigated this and really four of the big things that I have learned through my own journey as far as being an introvert and being successful in my coaching business. And really it's the things that I teach my clients as well. So the first thing that I find that is super helpful, especially as an introvert, is to have a very specific niche and messaging. And the reason why a niche can be ideal client, it can be your target market, like these are interchangeable words really. Um, but why I find this so important is because when you have this piece nailed down and very specific, this allows you to really stand out in the marketplace. So you don't have to be loud. You don't have to be obnoxious. You don't have to be like me, me, you know, come see me. Um, or you're not looking at me. You know, this is what makes you stand out. This is what makes you stand out from everyone else. And instead of having to be loud or flashy, uh, you can just have really, really good messaging that really resonates with the people that you are meant to be working with and the people that you really want to be working with. And so when it comes to your ideal client, your messaging, really understanding the problem that you help people solve, because yes, this is what people are looking for, a solution to a problem, and this is what people will pay for. And then also, who is that person? So for example, my ideal clients are very similar to me, and this is the same for you. <laughs> like most likely our ideal clients are very similar to us in a version of us. So for example, most of my ideal clients, not all of them, but a lot of them are a little bit more on the introverted side. And so I don't have to be an extrovert. Like most of my clients are looking for someone they resonate and looking for someone like them to work with and to help them with their business. So I don't have to pretend to be someone I'm not. I know by being me, um, that I'm going to resonate and attract the people that I'm wanting to work with. Okay. So that's number one, your, your niche and your messaging. And number two, is sharing your story. This is so important and it's something that I know feels very intimidating for a lot of people when they're getting started. Um, most of us <laughs> aren't used to sharing our stories and we feel like maybe shameful around it or it just feels very vulnerable for us to put our stories out there. But once again, this is one of the things that really makes you stand apart from all the other coaches out there without having to be loud or flashy, okay? Um, when people resonate with your story, they connect with you and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, I feel this connection. And this is one of the things that really makes them want to work with you because we want to work with someone we connect with. We want to work with someone who gets it, um, gets what we've been through, and we believe that that person can help us. So sharing your story is super powerful. And I, a lot of times, 
you know, I just think about this when I'm looking to work with someone in my own life, whether it's a coach, whether I'm looking for like a new dentist or a doctor or someone to cut my hair, I wanna know who they are. I wanna know their story, why they're doing what they're doing. For me, that's always one of the first things I look at because I wanna connect with that person. I wanna feel like, yeah, this feels this person feels like a good fit for me. And their story is a huge part that really um, I find resonates for me when I'm looking for someone to work with, okay? So start sharing your story. And when it comes to sharing your story, just to give you a little bit of advice around that, the story that is related to what your ideal clients are looking for support with. You don't necessarily have to share your whole long life story. Maybe it makes sense to do that, um, but don't make it too long (laughs) because you want people to actually read it. Uh, But the story that's really gonna resonate and connect with your ideal clients. So that part of your life, okay? All right, so number three is authenticity. And this means just really being yourself, showing up as yourself, letting your personality shine, your interests, your passions, be you. If you're funny and you like to be humorous, bring that into your marketing. Bring that into, if you're doing videos or you're doing written posts, like bring that in. Just be you. If you're out meeting people, like be you. Um, One of the examples I wanted to give was, uh, I was just talking to a client about this and she was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, everything is feeling like really stiff in my marketing and like, I can't really just be me. And you know, I like to be funny and kind of joke around and stuff too. And I was like, oh my gosh, bring that into your marketing because people love that and they want you to be you because we connect with people who are being authentic. And really most of us have a, a BS <laughs> meter and we can tell like, is this person really being authentic? And that's what we connect with versus like someone who's just like pretending to be like this robot, this perfect, perfect robot of someone who they really aren't, right? So be you. Um, One of the examples that I brought up even for me is I swear sometimes like it, it happens. I don't even really think about it. It just happens. That's kind of me. And I've sworn in some of my videos and stuff. And some people are really, um, you know, turned off by it. And I've had people make comments like, oh my gosh, this video would be great if you weren't swearing all the time. And I'm like, It's just kind of how I am and sometimes I swear and it's not like I'm dropping F-bombs all the time, but sometimes I say shit or, you know, other things come up and that's just kind of who I am and I'm just being me when I show up and when I market as well. Like I'm not pretending to be someone else. I'm not pretending to be perfect. I'm just being me. And so if someone has a problem with it, they aren't meant to be my ideal client and that is perfectly fine and I really don't care what they think. And the people who do resonate with it, they're okay with swearing, maybe they swear themselves and they're looking for someone who's just showing up and being themselves, okay? So one example that that I have experienced myself. And the next step, number four, is finding the right marketing for you. So we're all meant to market differently. And I think there's definitely some types of marketing that work really well for people who are more extroverted. And I think there's some types of marketing that work better for people who are introverted and some that work good for both. And I think it's it's just a matter of finding what feels right and a good fit for you. So obviously you're watching me on YouTube. For me, like, making videos in the beginning of starting my business was like the scariest thing in the whole world. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't do it. I mean, I was probably a year, maybe even two years into my business before I made my first video. And now, but it was something I felt called to do. It was a way I wanted to share. And now that I've done it, it has been one of the most amazing decisions I've ever made, even though it felt really scary in the beginning. And so for me, video has been such a great thing. And I still do written posts. I do quite a bit of written content, which I think is important as well, because as a business owner, um, getting good at writing is important. Um, But if you like video more, like that's a really great way to connect with people as well. Um, And actually a better connection, I think, online too, obviously when you can see the person and see them speaking to you. Uh, If you're meeting with people in person, some people are really good at that. They're really great with meeting people in person. They love that. They love the connection. Like you can totally do that as well. And so what I really want you to look at for you is there's 
you know, a couple things when it comes to finding the right marketing for you. First of all, like knowing who your ideal client is and where is that person hanging out? Once again, there's someone who's really like you, right? And so I think about like me, where am I hanging out online? Like I use Facebook, I use Instagram, YouTube, like those are things I personally use. And so it's what I use to market my business as well, because I'm guessing my ideal client is like me and they're hanging out where I'm hanging out online. I'm not using things like TikTok, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, like because I'm, I don't use those myself, so I'm not going to market there. Um, you can keep that in mind, obviously, if your ideal client is hanging out, you know, specifically somewhere where you're not. Um, you know, you can always check out those places, but you really want to think about where are they hanging out. You want to think about like what is good for your energy. So one of the reasons why I really enjoy YouTube specifically is because it isn't. Um, some social media is more about like posting a bit more often. YouTube is, you can post less often um, and your content lives there longer. Um, and I really like that for me personally, as far as like energy, um, because I'd rather post less often and post something that's like really high impact as opposed to like posting all the time. It doesn't feel as good to me and it's a good fit for my energy. Um, I also look at what do I enjoy. Once again, videos felt very scary for me in the beginning. In the beginning, now I really, really enjoy them. Um, and what's easiest, easy-ish for you? <laughs> Nothing's gonna be super easy because you're just getting started and it's new. But are there certain things that are easier for you to do? Bring those things into your marketing. Okay, using your strengths. Um, I probably never really knew that one of my strengths was doing videos or, you know, speaking and, um, unless I had tried it out because I felt that call, I would have never known. So it can feel scary to you, but if you're feeling called to do something, I highly recommend that you try it out. And then the last piece, this is a little bonus stuff. I didn't put this in here, but I think to find good support with growing your business as far as finding like a mentor and even a support community of people who you resonate with. Because when you're learning or working with someone who's helping you with your business that you don't really resonate with, a lot of times they're going to be teaching you things that don't necessarily feel like the best fit for you. And finding someone who I think is open to different ways of marketing as opposed to being like, this is how I did it and this is how you should do it. Because I have found <laughs> through many years of helping other coaches that just because I did something a certain way or another coach did something a certain way, it doesn't mean it's necessarily the right fit for you. Um, just like when we're looking at health and fitness, there isn't one right diet or way of exercising for everyone. It's the same when it comes to marketing your business. And so when it comes to being an introvert and finding what's the best fit for you, be open to doing your own thing and finding your own uni unique way of doing things. All right, so these are my tips for you as far as being an introvert and marketing your business. And yes, you can absolutely be as successful as you want to be as an introvert. Don't believe stories that you're telling yourself or that you're hearing out there that say, oh, you're an introvert or you're more quiet and you can't be successful. Like a lot of times that's a story we tell ourselves and it's 100% not true, okay? You can be successful, you just have the key is to be yourself as opposed to pretending to be someone else. Okay. So I hope you found this video helpful. I'd love to hear your biggest takeaway down in the comments. Let me know. Are you an introvert? Are you resonating with this? What was your biggest takeaway from today's video? And if you want to dive a bit deeper into the steps to starting your business, getting your first clients, I have a free training. I'm going to link right below this video. It's the eight steps to boost your confidence as a coach. Yes, this is really important, especially for those of us who are introverted and how to get your first or next paying client. So I will link that below this video. I wanna thank you so much for joining me. If you want more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you hit the bell, you'll get a notification each time I post a new video and I will see you in the next video.